Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about some AP Biology uh, background in different chemistry topics. So this is going to be important throughout the year and we're going to start with some problems or things you might encounter as far as the chemistry goes, especially when it comes to molarity. So here is an example of a problem taken from an AP Biology math practice that I was given by another teacher. This is a common one you can Google so I won't give the answers in case it's your assigned homework, but I did want this type of problem um, to explain this type of problem in context and show you what you might have to do. So let's say you have no idea how to do this problem and you've never had chemistry or you've wiped all of your chemistry knowledge from your brain. Um, not to fear, there's still one glimmer of hope and that's your handy dandy formula sheet. So great, take it out. Let's see what related information we can find out on our formula sheet. So right here, we have this water potential section um, and we have some different variables. But now again, if it's been a while since chemistry, this may not seem helpful at all. And in fact, you can complete our sample problem without much chemistry knowledge. So you don't necessarily need this section of the formula sheet to do the sample problem you just saw. But it's a great opportunity to go into some of these topics. Um, so today we're going to talk about how molarity and osmolarity might show up again in labs, other problems all throughout the year in AP Biology, especially when it comes to experimental design and analyzing experimental data. So for example, you could be given some unlabeled sucrose solutions and then have to determine water potential of, uh, and the molarity of each solution. So let's back up and get some basics on molarity. Now scientists need to measure the number of particles of a substance in a solution. So molarity is the amount of that substance or moles in a liter of water. So let's talk about molarity. Molarity is expressed in big M, moles of solute per liters of solution. So moles per liter. And remember, um, our mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number of particles. And uh, that's a lot, a large number of particles. And you'll get to more of that in chemistry, or maybe you already studied it in chemistry. So to calculate the molarity of a solution, which we won't need to, need, need to do too much in AP Biology, um, you'll divide the number of moles of solute by the volume of the solution expressed in liters. So again, molarity, or big M, is moles of solute per liters of solution, or moles per liters. So remember that the volume is in liters of solution, not liters of solute, because we're looking at the solution as a whole. And when molarity is reported, this big M symbol is read as molar. So if we have 0.2 molar, it would be 0.2 big M, same thing as moles per liter. So for example, we have 0.3 big M sucrose, that is read as 0.3 molar sucrose solution. Um, and a lot of times you'll be given the molarity of a solution um, and be asked to calculate something like water potential. Other times you'll use different molarities in experimental designs. Um, but being able to recognize the molarity as a concentration of particles in the solution is gonna be important. So for example, you'll need to know that 6.0 uh, molar HCl is m a much higher, a much more concentrated solution than 0.01 molar HCl. Um, and sometimes maybe you'll need to create a dilute solution by adding lower concentration to a higher concentration to lower the molarity. Um, so you may be asked to do a dilution um, from a concentrated stock. So that is a skill you will need to know. So let's do a molarity problem. Let's see if what we can do with this and our formula sheet. So the molarity, the molar concentration of a sugar solution in an open beaker has been determined to be 0 0.4 molar. Calculate the solute potential at 27 degrees Celsius. So let's look at what we need to find. The solute potential. So if we look on our formula sheet, ta -da, represented by the Greek symbol psi and this little s, that is the solute potential. So we need to find solute potential. Great. It's on our formula sheet. And there's a formula to go with solute potential with lots of given variables. So we can pretty much just plug this in. So our formula for solute potential, psi sub s or psi s, negative ICRT. So let's look at each one of these. I is the ionization content, and it tells you for sucrose, this is 1.0 because sucrose does not ionize in water, and generally this will be given. You won't really have to calculate the ionization constant for the most part. I've never seen a student have to do this or heard of a student having to do this on an exam. So let's plug it in. Don't forget that negative. So negative is 1.0, and I did something really bad. I did not include my units in this formula, so please make sure you do that. But the next one is C, our molar concentration. Great, we're given that as well. R is our next variable, and this is going to be the pressure constant, and this is also a given, and it's also on your formula sheet, so that's great. And then the last one, temperature is in Kelvin, so all we need to do is take our temperature in Celsius and add 270 to 3. So we do that, we plug this in, and you guys can calculate that if you want to. All right, so next up, 
We figured out how to solve that. Let's talk about why we even care about how many particles are in a solution. So let's go back to molecular movement. Water moves from areas of high potential or high free water concentration, so water is represented by this blue here, um, to areas of low potential, low free water concentration. So we notice water goes from high to low, just like any other molecule, across a semi-selectively uh, permeable barrier and or a semi-permeable membrane. Um, and say this barrier is impermeable to, the, impermeable to the solute, the water will go from high to low. So you can check out more information on this on our diffusion and osmosis videos. Um, remember, solutes decrease the concentration of free water since water molecules surround the solute molecules. So wherever there's more solute, there is a lower water concentration. So it's kind of a backwards logic puzzle. Okay, so I wanna go through hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic, which is review from regular biology for most of you. Um, this diagram here I keep on all the slides and I didn't change the arrows, so just keep that in mind, pay attention to these diagrams. And in these diagrams here, water is actually represented by blue dots, which doesn't make it a very accurate diagram, but just go with the flow. So pink dots are represented by the solute and the blue dots are the water molecules. All right. So the terms hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic are used to describe solutions separated by our selectively permeable membranes. And a hypertonic solution has a higher solute concentration and a lower water potential as compared to the other solution. So therefore water will move toward the hypertonic solution through the membrane by osmosis. So generally out of the cell and then the cell will shrink as water moves out. All right, so hypotonic is the opposite. There is a higher concentration of solute molecules on the inside of the cell and a lower concentration on the outside of the cell, which means there's a higher concentration of water outside and lower inside. So of course, where do molecules go? High to low, always. Water flows into the cell. There's an osmotic flow into the cell. That cell will swell and then sometimes even burst. Now for an isotonic solution, there's no net gain of water anywhere. It's just no osmotic, osmotic flow. Of course, molecules are constantly in motion, um, but isotonic solutions have equal water potentials on either side. And so what we see is just sort of this equal environment the whole time. All right, so the movement of solutes across uh, and water across cellular membranes is a concept we'll see again and again. So molecules are constantly in motion and cells work to maintain their internal environments and control solute movement. We'll see these over and over when we're investigating transpiration in plants or excretion in animals, homeostasis, osmoregulation is gonna regulate our solute con concentrations um, and is gonna balance our gain and loss of water in living systems. All right. So going back to molarity and water potential, um, water potential is gonna predict which way the water will diffuse through plant tissues. Um, again, we use that Greek letter psi to represent water potential. Generally, when we're calculating things, a lot of times in an open container, this pressure potential will be zero, so we won't even need to worry about this psi p uh, part right here. So a lot of times our solute potential will be equal to the overall water potential. Now that can change, but very frequently pressure potential will be zero. So keep that in mind. And we worked through the problem earlier. You guys can have fun. You may see other problems with water potential on the AP exam as well. So going back to our original problem, what we're asked is to graph these data to the right of the table. Um, and then you're gonna label where the cells were hypotonic and the solution was hypertonic and vice versa. And then determine the apparent molar concentration or osmolarity of the potato core cells. So we're going back here. You'd first have to make a graph, label where the cells are hypotonic and hypertonic um, and the opposite for the solution and then determine the apparent molar concentration. So here's a really bad graph. I don't have my units. Uh, scaled, so that's bad. Um, but this idea is os of osmolarity is how the solute concentration of a solution determines the movement of water across the selectively permeable membrane. So this is where the potato core concentration would equal the water concentration. So where is it crossing this zero line here? And if we had a better graph, we'd be able to figure that out. I'm not going to tell you the answer in this video, but you guys can graph the data and figure it out for yourself. All right, so stay tuned for more background in AP Biology. Check out some of our other videos and get ready for future topics like oxidation and reduction and special properties of molecules. That's it, guys. Thanks.